where's Joe Biggs? Uh, you know, he was fired because of drunken rants. No, he was not fired. It was not because of drunken rants. And I see people going, no, uh, on, on other videos I've done, no, because Alex is covering up Pizzagate and Joe wouldn't stop covering it. Let me explain why Joe Rogan, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Joe Rogan on there too, why, why, uh, why uh, Joe and, uh, yeah, Joe Biggs, I've been up since 6 a.m. Uh, had had a beer, nothing to drink, I'm just kind of tired here. Uh, teleprompter free, why, uh, why uh, Joe Biggs, he's no longer with InfoWars. Uh, I love Joe. He's worked here about two and a half years. Great guy, great veteran, war hero, patriot, really nice guy. Um, a lot of attention comes when you work with InfoWars. And the thing we've always run into with a lot of other people is once you work there, you get a lot of contacts to do other things. Uh, and so that's fine. Uh, but then when people take on a bunch of other product, uh, projects and it cuts in on what they're doing, uh, over time, then, I am forced to basically tell folks, hey, you've got to decide what you want to do. And so Joe's working on books. Joe's working on T-shirt deals. He's working on major movies. He's working on documentaries. He's doing all these things. And so I just basically said, hey, choose what you want to do. And I said, and I said for the, I said for the time being, um, you know, go do that for six months, and if it does great, and all that's successful, we'll have you on as a guest and promote it, and, and, and just celebrate your success. Uh, and I said, uh, go back to sleep, baby, I love you. Um, I'm gonna have to get off here in a minute. She doesn't usually wake up, but she is. She went to bed like an hour ago. Um, I mean, I don't, shouldn't have to get into the whole inside baseball here, but just to be nice to Joe so people don't go wild and make crap up, that's what happened. And so he said, yeah, that sounds good. And I gave him a nice severance thing, almost like a boost, you know. And, and I said, if you've got some great film idea or some book and you want it, you know, and I think it's a great idea, we'll work with you. In fact, bring me in as a partner on it. So that's it. Um, and, you know, Joe's said he's got a kid coming along. He's getting hitched. And that kind of creates a nesting mode of, of really wanting to do something bigger. Uh, and, and, and it's a paradigm view. And I hope he's the first employee that leaves us who actually has success. I want him to be successful and to create his own system. Everybody knows I promote everybody. I love it. I'm not in competition with my crew or anybody else that's a patriot. It's just that people go, wow, I've become famous. I'm, you know, I'm having all this attention. I'm so successful. Uh, I want to go basically do my own thing. But then people always want to do their own thing uh, separately from what I'm doing, but with kind of within my operation. And it just gets in the way of my vision and what I want to do and what I want to promote and what I want to get out. And so when I hire somebody, I sit there and I go, okay, well, you could be harassed and you could be put on a list working here and the media could lie about you. And they go, okay, I understand. I don't, I don't care. And then I say, and then you're going to have people. Look, it's nothing to do with Joe. When you, when you are in the media, especially with Hollywood collapsing and, all, and, and there's not much money in media now because everybody can do it, there are all these people that call up and go, I'll give you a million dollars to be in my movie and everything. And as soon as somebody leaves the paid job, people go, oh, actually, you need to put money in to be part of this. And it's just all these people trying to engage in media operations and trying to build things and trying to do things. And they'll basically say anything. And then your employees are like, no, they promised me a million dollars. This wasn't big. This was, uh, this was Burmas. This was, this was, uh, people always ask where uh, Jason Burmas went. Great guy, helped do the graphics on Loose Change. One of the most viewed films in history. I produced it. Uh, didn't really get paid when I produced it like I was supposed to. That was okay. Uh, but Burmas was one of the good guys on the crew. Uh, and I hired him. He was there about a year and a half. And man, it just was like, whoa. I was like, wow, I see you're wearing that t-shirt every time for this other company on air. Are you being paid for that? And he's like, yeah, you know, is that all right? I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm paying you good. Focus on the film you're making here and the radio show you're doing, man. And then if you want to go out and get some sponsors and, and, and be a salesman here, you can do that. But you work at this company. And uh, back then, that was like five years ago, I just said, you know what, go ahead and do whatever you want, Burmas. That's fine. Just finish your film. And then Burmas said, hey, I got my big deal, my big my big movie deal. I'm getting a million dollars big movie. I said, congratulations, Burmas. Watch him load up his U-Haul with his dog and drive away. And then they told him a month later, it was, we're not doing it. Give us your money. Can you buy a camera? He was, it was by, and it was all because the guy he was working with, you know, had an X-Files credit. Oh my God, you know. And I don't even say that to be mean to my crew. It's just like, I've been through this over and over again. 
and Burmas was really sweet about it, really great. He's a really talented guy. I love Burmas. We should get him back on as a guest. Um, I didn't mean to digress into all this. I had other employees one time come and, and come to me and like get in my face, and they went, we're going on our own to do our own big things, and we know you're bad. And I was like, well, well, you don't have to get angry at me like I'm your parents when you leave the house. I just said, enjoy yourselves, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm such a cool boss. I let people do whatever they want within the confines of liberty and freedom. My reporters have more leeway than any other reporters have ever had. Um, all I say is they've got to document what they're covering. Um, and I love my reporters, but it's still usually my reporters that get me burned in the media uh, because they don't understand the nuances of it. And what I'm trying to do is get reporters who are trained to understand it, who I can have as apprentices. And finally, I've got Leanne McAdoo, and I've got the crew and the writers, and I've got David Knight. And, and everybody up there gets it, is focused, and, 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 and understands what they're doing, and understands how serious this mission is. This is not about being famous. This is not about making money. Um, though we need money to have a backup and defend ourselves legally and other things. It's fuel in the fight for freedom. And that's what we do. But no, the Joe Biggs thing is he just has a bunch of really exciting things he's doing. And I think he's going to be the first person that leaves InfoWars that if he applies himself, I think he has a 90% chance of being more successful than he was at InfoWars. And he's still going to do reports for us and stuff. Oh, too. yeah, he's still not bad. No, nobody yeah. listens to him. He said that. <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, he said, I'm still going to do reports. I'm still going to contribute. But, but, but see, that's the conspiracy theory thing. Everybody's learning the mainstream media lies all the time. So then they project that on us and they think, we must then be spinning or obfuscating or have some big sophisticated thing because we're the big $10 million corporation or $20 million corporation or $50 billion corporation, you know, like, like News Corp. No, we're not. We're here with an iPhone at my house with my eight-year-old daughter getting up and, and wandering around halfway sleepwalking. See, and, and, and so what I've told you is the total truth. And by total truth, it's literally what came out of my you know, memory banks just of what happened and, and to even give you, you know, uh, context of, 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 of stuff where I'm just sitting there and, you know, people have dreams. People want to do other stuff. People work somewhere three or four years. They're not mad at you. They're not bad. They're good people. They want to go like Jakari Jackson. That turned into a whole other conspiracy theory. I said, Jakari Jackson has been here four years and a wonderful job. And uh, he misses his family and stuff, uh, and uh, he, he, he wants to go and do uh, publishing. The guy's a great author. The guy did some of the best video editing we ever had. Uh, he, his passion, though, is, is, is writing comic books and illustrating comic books. I've seen a few he's done. One's like science fiction, it looks like. The other's like a kid's deal. And I'm sure he'll be successful. Uh, you know, I mean, I wish him all the best. I mean, that, that turned into a you know, conspiracy theory. You know, after four years, he's like, well, this is some heavy stuff. You know, this is really getting to me. He goes, I don't know if I can do this. And I said, hey, I encourage you, you know, here's a severance dealer, you know, whatever. I, I, you know, I encourage you to just enjoy yourself. You're not, you're not in the game. Don't want to play football. Don't want to, you know, you're vamanos. And that's kind of what it is. And I see a, a, a baby bird that's ready to fly and it's up at the edge of the nest and it's one, and it's one, and you know, this is going on. I'm like, hey, fly, man. Birdcage, doors open, go. Uh, that's how that works. So I, with Biggs and with Jakari, just kind of said, fine. So that, that's where they are. And, and look, we've got a lot of really big things going on in this world. A lot of huge things unfolding. I didn't mean to digress off into all that. We'll be covering a lot more tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central right through the main broadcast. And, you know, what I want to see is more of you get involved and get on here yourselves. Nowadays, with the equipment that's out there, with an iPhone and, and just information and ideas, you can read famous books on air, uh, you know, about history or about the New World Order, written from the perspective of H.G. Wells' uh, nonfiction or from Cecil Rhodes. Somebody could read Tragedy and Hope on air or, uh, you know, you could provide that for the visually impaired. Uh, I've thought about, you know, uh, doing stuff like that uh, where we can read uh, something like tragedy and hope but also something like none dare call a conspiracy. I mean, I've got billions of ideas. The answer is you're the answer. The answer is taking action. The answer is getting involved. The answer is going with your passion, creating art, 
and, and, and standing up to a system that says we the people having access to the internet, we the people being involved, we the people being informed, we the people putting out our own non-cookie cutter, true diverse ideas is not is not fake news. The mainstream media got caught lying. The government's got caught lying. We know they're out to get us. So now we're struggling around trying to figure out what's true. So on this giant spectrum, there's going to be pure bull on the internet, and there's going to be pure veritas and zeitgeist on the internet. And in and, you know in between, there's going to be all sorts of other stuff. And the corporate system that can't compete with it's panicking, saying ban it, ban it, ban it, shut it down. It's totally clear. I'm signing off for Infowars.com.